Here's a look at the first portable power supply that I built. Since I first put the video online, I've noticed a slew of beautifully designed portable power boxes with some really great custom designs. I've really enjoyed what YouTubers have been producing in that area lately. What I haven't seen a lot of, though, is how to put one of these together in its simplest form, in a way that absolutely anybody with no wiring experience or, or interest in learning wiring could easily throw together. What I found out from actually using one of these is that sometimes it's a lot easier and more convenient to throw something together quickly. I ran into a situation where I needed a portable power supply that would last much longer than what the original one I designed would produce specifically running a laptop computer and a couple of phone chargers 10 hours a day for three days in a row during a convention. The convention organizers were charging $150 to run an electrical line to our table, so I decided that was unacceptable. I could throw something together for around that price and use it over and over at every convention that I attended. So I went with a simple, quick approach, picked up three things I needed and threw it together in less than a minute. I already owned the battery charger, so four things if you need a charger. I picked up a battery box from Walmart, a 12 volt 750 watt inverter from Harbor Freight, and a deep cycle marine and RV battery at a local auto parts store. You could probably pick up all three in most Walmarts or Home Depots. I already had a charger, but if you don't, you can pick up a nice one pretty much anywhere. I picked up mine from Home Depot I chose this one specifically because of its simplistic, easy to use design. If you don't want to harm your battery, it's a good idea to get a charger maintainer. That way you can leave your battery on the charger without being concerned about overcharging it. Plus you can just leave it plugged in to keep it topped off so that it's ready to use when you need it. So here's the simplest way to set one of these up. It's really just a matter of connecting the red connectors from the inverter to the red positive terminal on the battery and the black connector to the black negative terminal. Flip the power switch on, and you're good to go. There are multiple inverter types you can pick from, so pick whatever works best for your needs. I knew I'd only need one or two plug-in outlets and a USB port, so that's what I picked up. The battery box is more aesthetically pleasing. Let's face it, it looks ridiculous carrying a 12-volt battery to a trade show. It's also easy to tuck your inverter into, and you can plug your peripherals in through the open slots on the side, so as to look more organized at the show. I transported this around with a fold-up dolly that fit right in the trunk, and I could also fold it neatly away and place it under the table at the convention I was attending. In my last video, people asked me about charging the power box. In this case, it couldn't be more simple. Just hook the red positive outlet of your charger to the red positive terminal in the battery, the black outlet of your charger to the black negative terminal of the battery, and you're good to go. I plugged mine in at the end of each day of use and woke up with a fully charged battery ready to go for the next day ahead. And at the end of each day I had power to spare, so I chose my battery type well. Before putting this together we briefly tried out this commercial portable power box that we picked up from Home Depot. It's really nice looking, the setup is great, it looks professional, the problem is that it only holds a charge for about six hours, and after charging it all night, lasts less time the next day. Over time, we found that it was lasting around four hours at a time, so it became completely impractical to use. My advice is to save your money and put something together yourself. If the first approach is too simple for you and you wish to put together a slightly smaller, customized power box without getting too complex, here's what you'll need. An ammo box. I picked this one up from Harbor Freight. A 12 volt voltage meter dual USB combo, I picked mine up on eBay. A small 12 volt battery, I picked mine up at a Radio Shack when they were still around. Black and red 14 gauge electrical wire, I found this at Home Depot. Three port push in, wire connectors and female disconnects, which I also picked up at Home Depot. The power switch is optional. I say that because you can simply plug in a wire to the battery when you need power, if you like to keep things simple. If you do wish to install a switch, I'd recommend a more basic one. This particular switch I'm using requires a soldering iron, and the parts that need to be soldered are small and difficult to get at. I picked it out simply because I like the appearance of it. I ordered mine from China and it came with no directions on how to wire it. I'll show you how I did it shortly, in the off chance you decide to pick one up. These are the basic tools you need to put your portable power box together. 
add in a soldering iron and some solder if you decide to go the more complex route with the power switch. We started out unscrewing each separate piece from the 12 volt combo. That's partly so they can all be wired more easily without the bracket, but also to use the bracket as a template. We used a red marker to mark where each piece will be located and drilled out each of the holes. It doesn't hurt to clean up the holes with a little sandpaper, but it's not absolutely necessary. We then popped each of the 12 attachments in place and used the tighteners that came with them to screw them in place on the ammo box. Then we cut five strips of six inch wire in black and five in red, and one eight inch strip of wire in black and one in red to be attached from the battery to the 12 volt electrical attachments. We used the wire strippers to strip away an exposed section on the ends of each wire and connected each of the wires as shown in the wiring diagram to the three port push connectors as well as the female disconnects. I turned all of the 12 volt connections so that the negative connectors on each were facing the same direction and the positive in the other, simply to keep the wiring process simple. Then it was just a matter of connecting all the parts to the battery. Now if you want to keep things simple, you don't have to have a power switch. You can just leave one line connected to the battery and plug and unplug the other when you want the power box off or on. If you get one, I suggest the simple switch like I recommended before. I only picked up the one I'm using because I like the design of it. I bought it on eBay from a Chinese distributor and it didn't come with directions. So in the off chance you pick up one like mine, here's how I wired it. You'll need a soldering iron and some patience as the parts are rather small to fit with the gauge of wire I selected. You're better off to pick a smaller gauge wire for it, but I just used what I had available already. Here's the final product in operation. It works great for phone charging and small peripherals, but you'll need something bigger if your energy needs are more demanding.